Yo, what's going on, guys? Hope y'all are doing well. Today, I want to bring to you my uh, top 10 most annoying things in For Honor. And these are not in any particular order. Uh, they consist of character flaws to mechanics and the way, you know, rather than just like it, me picking on one character, you know, just bashing a moveset or whatever. It's not what I'm here for. It's just uh, things that could use some tweaking, um, at least in my eyes. I'm no pro. I'm no dev. Uh, just from a, from a casual player standpoint, I find these things to be pretty crazy. Uh, enough to the point where, you know, hence it annoys you. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get straight into it. So I have a video playing in the background. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is Conqueror's same sidelines. Um, during Conqueror's testing ground phase, they gave him to where he could chain his lights, um, you know, normal speed. It's either like 400, 500 milliseconds where he could chain his lights, um, you know, no matter which, which guard stance he had, it could be on the top, could be on the side. But when it came to his same side lights, you know, you'd light on the left, say you light it on the left, and then you did it again, and you keep going and chaining and chaining. Um, during a little testing ground phase, he was able to do that, but then they reverted it back to old comp, where his light is super slow, and you can see in the video, it's wicked slow. I mean, people can see that from a mile away, um, and they can parry it and get a, uh, a heavy off of it, because, I mean, it's considered a light, but it's like the speed of a heavy. Um, but yeah. It's pretty crazy. So. so the next one I want to talk about is Sense Bash. Uh, my buddy of mine told me about this. He calls it the Scent Bash. Uh, it's where you're able to input your bash after uh, dodging forward to uh, input it between 300 to 500 milliseconds. Uh, a couple characters I know have this. Um, I mean, Scent, of course, is one of them. I think Gladiator's Punch, you know, you know a bunch of other characters. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into it. But compared against characters like uh, Black Prior and Conqueror, uh, you can see that after 100 milliseconds into their dodge, that is when you can uh, start up your bash. So it's way faster, um, it's uh, less reactable. Not that the bash itself is reactable, but it's hard to um, see the dodge coming, you know, um, just because, I mean, it's straight up 100 milliseconds. That's, that is pretty damn fast. So Next, what I want to talk about was the uh, Afira Guard Swap Kick. Now, as of now making this video, it is uh, March 7th. I'll have this video going up in a couple days. Um, but there is a bug right now, and I'm not sure if they'll fix it during when we get the next patch on the 16th. But right now, um, no matter who you're going up against, as long as you are playing Afira, if you hit someone, you know, with the light, you might be some more hit stun stuff in between. But most commonly, I've seen if you light hit stun someone, and then you follow up with the kick. If they switch their guard in between then, um, you know, before the kick lands, then that Afira pretty much gets a, a free kick. It's free 18 damage. Or if you're near a wall, then they get a wall splat and they get even more damage, you know, depending on what you, um, what you opt to choose. So if you don't swap your guard, you know, during this whole mix up and when she hits you, then you're able to dodge out of it like normally. And this is a bug that I know it's been in with uh, Griffin, but they, they patched a long time ago. And another character that's slipped in my mind. But it, it just seems to happen every now and then when a new character comes out. So hopefully it gets fixed. But uh, right now you can see uh, my buddy's guard uh, switch um, after the kick when I do all that. But he can just dodge if he, if he maintains the same guard up top. So The next thing that I want to talk about is Nobu's lights after her kick has iframes. I found this by accident. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. Um, they probably mentioned it somewhere up there in the internet. But uh, I found this completely by accident. So we, of course, went to a training and we tested it out. And um, I think I was playing uh, Afira. I'll have it rolling in the background, but I was playing Afira and my buddy was playing Nobu. And you can see him go for the kick. And after I opt for the dodge attack, he's just able to light. Uh, and it's got iframes, so he's able to connect with me, but I don't hit with him because of that whole property mix up there. Now, was it intentional to do this? I, I assume so. I don't play Nobu, so I probably just overlooked the patch notes where she was able to do this. But when I first discovered this, uh, I was like, wow, that's crazy. But then I later, uh, later began to think that um, it's very, that's a very odd type of behavior, a very odd mechanic to have in the game when you're trying to punish someone. Not necessarily just a, um, a dodge attack. I mean, you could always just dodge the kick and wait for the light. But, uh, you know, maybe it does take practice. I mean, it does take practice to, to parry the light on reaction or whatnot. But that's not something that I see that's very um, healthy for the game. Uh, even though it's just a little small uh, subtle move. 
but I'm no dev or nothing like that. So, and next what I want to talk about was he sent double dodge out of his punch. Um, and you guys can see this as plain as day. Um, if I'm able to just to get a, uh, um, if I hit my buddy with a light, you know, he gets a light hit stun, a uh, little light reaction there. And if I choose to opt for a fully charged punch, he can just dodge out of both of them. Now I've seen this a couple times, but I also wanted to mention it too. Um, it, it, it does kind of hurt scent in a way, um, when instead of just fainting it, you know, you just want to commit, you want to get the incredibilis at the end, you know, 30 damage. Um, it's a pretty cool move, but because of this, uh, interaction, this behavior, it's, um, it kind of prohibits a lot of, uh, gameplay, especially in ganks. Um, people like to dodge around a lot. So if you hit someone with your light and then they just keep spamming dodge, chances are they're just going to dodge out of your, out of your long punch. So, and next one I want to talk about, this one pertains to breach and breach only. Um, in dominion, you know, we get the small little minions. You hit them once with a light or heavy attack, doesn't matter. And they're gone. But this is, these are pikemen and these pikemen are crazy these pikemen are dangerous they deal a lot of damage i think it's uh 12 or 13 damage i could be mistaken but i think it's right around that area um i was playing a match today and the pikemen saved my life i mean they they killed this guy who i think was about to roll me and i was like well that's crazy but then there have been countless times where pikemen have killed me and it takes more than one hit rather than the dominion a uh, regular minion to kill them so uh yeah screw pikemen Next one I want to talk about is level 3,000 bots, okay? I mean, there's level 1, level 2, and level 3 bots, but um, there are bots out there that feel like they just don't let you play the game properly. They'll, they'll parry every attack. They'll dodge everything that you throw at them that's supposedly supposed to be unreactable, uh, even like a Shaolin sweep where you can faint that, a Conqueror bash you can faint that. They'll read it right every time. Um, and then sometimes you just throw out raw heavies, and it'll catch them like... Uh, like they don't even know how to block so bots are very finicky um i wish they tweak up a little bit to where they'd have more um human-like behaviors um but then again they are ai so they could be unpredictable but uh yeah level like level 3000 bots is what i call them they're pretty crazy next one i want to talk about was the bp bash uh stam drain if you guys don't know what i'm talking about um there was a change a while back where they messed with a couple characters like conquer for example uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Warlord, but I'm going to stick with Conqueror just to be safe. Uh, Conqueror used to drain Stam on a neutral bash, and he could run you out of Stam, and um, it wouldn't be fun because, you know, characters like Yorm, you can tell it's his whole kit. He's trying to drain you out of Stam so he can knock you on the ground and get that Hammer Slam. Before his rework, Conqueror just bash you like crazy, and it would drain your Stam. And that wasn't really fun to fight against, you know? And they removed that with his rework. Conk got a lot more options. Now he doesn't uh, drain your Stam. However, uh, Black Prior has been in the game for a little while, and they just kind of overlooked Black Prior's uh, Stam drain. Now, to say it's intentional, I'm not really sure. Um, but as as of in the game now, it's uh, it's with us. So Second to last that I want to talk about is inconsistent guard breaks. Um, I wasn't able to replicate everything that I found, but you can go in like a in a um, perhaps a duel, or most commonly you can go in a game of Dom or whatever, right? And you could be fighting someone in a group, and someone could reach you from like a mile away with a guard break, right? And they would get that. And then, let's say, for example, you on the other hand, you're playing, and you go to throw out a guard break, and he's like right in front of you, what you feel like he's right in front of you, and it just doesn't connect. Uh, the most common thing that I could replicate that I knew was a problem with guard breaks was uh, Warden's um, long bash. You know, he was able to charge up his uh, bash fully, and there were instances where I was able to catch that my buddy couldn't uh, get me on that. But that was more like a late guard break. But for the most part, this is just something that I knew I could replicate. But I'm sure you guys have had plenty of experiences uh, going into games and you're like, wow, that should have connected, but it didn't. So, And the last thing that I want to talk about is universal and unique executions and emotes um, in the menu. Um, this is something that I've always wanted to talk about and that I've actually mentioned on the forum just once, but uh, no one knew me. They were like, oh, who's this guy? Whatever, right? So you can see me going through the menu here. I'm able to find a unique execution for, um, can't say, but there are other executions around them that are universal. So I don't know why, you know, you try to find an execution for a character that's unique pertaining to just that character, and then you keep going, and then you find out that it's just mixed and jumbled in with a bunch of universal executions that you could buy for anybody else. 
So there's a, I'm thinking maybe there could be something done about that. You know, give them a different tab, like a unique uh, executions tab or emotes tab separate from the uh, universal ones. Because the universal ones, you know, don't get me wrong, some of them are pretty good. But on the other hand, you could just be looking for a unique execution or an emote, um, like a new player. A new player could hop on the game and they're like, wow, this execution is really cool. But then they look through and they're like, well, this person has a universal execution the same as other people. And that might not be what they're looking for. It's just kind of all the, a UI mess, but I figured I'd throw this one in there. But yeah, anyways, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for uh, the most annoying things that I have found in For Honor. You know, there's a bunch of other things that are out there, like I mentioned. These are in no particular order. Uh, if you guys have any other ideas or any other annoying things you'd like to add, just let me know down below and I will be sure to read them. With that being said, hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you later.